This is from our list. Top 10 tips for mastering guitar. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Tip number seven is step-by-step -step guitar instruction. I know, this seems self-serving, but if I really wanted it to be self-serving, I could have made it the number one tip. It's seven. Truth is, there are many great guitarists that never had formal instruction. Although they didn't study a step-by-step -step method, you can bet that all of them learned from other guitar players and probably some really great professional players. But that's not the point of this topic. So here we go. When I get up in the morning, I have a ritual that begins with making coffee and continues through unwrapping my newspaper and setting out a few vitamins. Must stay healthy. One morning, I was a bit groggy. Making the coffee was no problem, but when I opened the cabinet to put my vitamins together, I could only find two of the three bottles. I rummaged around moving cups and coffee supplies, but couldn't find the third bottle. So I looked at the two on the counter to figure out which one was missing. Fish oil. I was missing fish oil. Okay, I gotta pause here. You're probably thinking, what does this have to do with guitar lessons? I'm getting there. Okay, so now that I know that it's fish oil, I visualize the bottle, look into the cabinet, and it was right in front of me. How could I miss something so obvious? Then I muttered something to myself. It's so much easier to find something if you know what you're looking for. Brilliant. I started off the day with a quotable quote. And then I began thinking about that phrase. It's so much easier to find something if you know what you're looking for. That is the inspiration for tip number seven. You need a step-by-step -step program to take you from your current level of experience to where you want to go. When you work with a good instructor, they have a program to teach what is right for you at your current stage of development. It's not about doing a Google search on what you believe is the next step. You haven't been there and there's a pretty good chance that your lack of experience doesn't allow you to chart out the next move. For example, if I look at your playing technique, I could quickly point out what you're doing right and what needs some work. Most of the time, a student has no idea that different aspects of their technique are causing major problems with their performance. That is until their technique is scrutinized by an instructor or a trusted pro. This doesn't just apply to beginners and intermediates. I can look at an advanced player's technique and usually find a major problem, and it's often something that has held them back from attaining their goals. So back to the quote that I mentioned at the beginning of this. It's so much easier to find something if you know what you're looking for. Once an instructor says that you're not bending notes to pitch, for example, you know what needs to be corrected. Then a Google search can be very helpful as long as it doesn't conflict with the advice from your teacher. So now let's talk about personal instructors. Most don't have a step-by-step -step program to follow. When you arrive at your lesson, the teacher's first question is, that's right. So what do you want to work on today? <laughs> I've been there. This isn't good. Chances are the instructor hasn't made any notes on what was accomplished last week. So you're off to a fresh new beginning with each lesson. Even so, if an instructor like this is your only choice, you can take control of the situation and gain from it. After each lesson, you make notes about what was accomplished. At the beginning of your next lesson, review your notes with the instructor and have her sign off on the lesson. Prove that you accomplished that lesson's goals before moving on. Now, guitar instructors are usually, maybe always, underpaid. To make ends meet, many are only willing to dole out a little information in each lesson. If you're not making progress, speak up. 
be sure that you leave the lesson with enough of a workload to carry you through to the next lesson. Now, currently, I'm willing to check your progress for free. That may change in the future. If so, the change will appear as a title down here someplace. <laughs> for now, shoot a quick video of your playing one of my exercises. Upload it to your YouTube channel. Set the video to unlisted and send me the link. I love seeing students play along with my lesson exercises. It gives me the opportunity to make modifications to the lesson and to make changes in a future lesson revision. It allows us to work on this program together. Even more important, it allows you to move forward with confidence or continue working on the lesson until it's accomplished. Speaking of accomplishing a lesson, let's begin today's lesson. It's a good one. First up is a demonstration of string bending. Bends are typically whole step. You're bending a fretted note to sound a whole step higher. For example, third string, seventh fret. You bend it to sound like the note a whole step higher. Third string, uh, ninth fret. That's a whole step bend. In the bend demonstration that's included with the tab, you'll find the first string, eighth fret, bend to sound like the tenth fret. Uh, also, the second string, eighth fret. And by the way, this is the way to check your uh, bend to make sure that it sounds correct. It's got to sound like the note a whole step higher. Also notice that I am using all four fingers to bend this. Now I'm in the pentatonic, uh, the, the first pattern in the pentatonic scale. So when I'm on the third string, I only have three fingers because of the way my fingers are positioned in the pentatonic. So I bend the string with three fingers. You want to use as many fingers as possible so it doesn't slip off like this. That's an ugly sound and not what we're looking for. <laughs> as you probably imagine, it's important to bend to pitch. Bends don't need to always be played perfectly if they're played quickly. Like a lot of bends are. And so was that right to pitch? Yes, no, you can't tell because it's very fast. You can also cheat and add some vibrato instead of trying to sustain a note right on pitch like this. Vibrato isn't a single pitch, so you don't need to be quite as accurate. To bend a pitch, plug your guitar into a tuner or open a tuning app. Look away from the tuner, bend the string, and look back to see if you're sharp or flat. Usually, you'll be consistently one or the other, and that's easier to adjust than to be flat sometimes and sharp other times. Most of the time that a string is bent, you're doing it so quickly that you can't listen for the pitch. You must learn the feeling of bending to pitch. To complicate matters, that feeling changes depending on your position on the neck. In the middle of the neck, frets are spaced further apart than 12 frets higher. So as you move up the neck, the physical act of bending a string requires less bend. This is something that requires constant practice as you continue to master guitar. My classic guitar licks lesson is full of bends. As I practice the licks, I spend as much time checking the bends as I do actually playing the licks. As you review recordings of your live playing, there is nothing quite as disturbing as hearing notes not bent to pitch. So be patient with this one. It will not be mastered in the next month or year, maybe never. I'm still working on it. Exercise one includes both hammers and pulls. Here it is at 80 beats per minute.
Exercise two is a combination of hammer and pull called hammer pull. I'll play this slowly. Notice that each triplet is a hammer and a pull. Just like that. Okay, here's the hammer pull exercise along with the animated tab. Hopefully you've spent some time attempting to improvise leads over your favorite songs. To play a lead over a track, the first thing that you need to do is identify the key of the song. If you're playing along with tab, the first chord in the verse usually defines the key. If it starts in A minor, the song is probably in A minor. If that doesn't sound quite right, try the first chord in the chorus. Let's say that the first chord in the verse is a G minor. Take the first pentatonic pattern that you learned in A minor and move it down two frets so the root is on G. So now it's G minor. Play a few riffs or scales from G to G. Just play over the track and see if that sounds right. Your licks should initially emphasize the G root note until you become more accomplished. This is especially true if you're sustaining a note. Now this is strictly for beginning lead guitar. Let's say you don't have tab and you have no idea what the key is. Just take the first pattern of the pentatonic scale and move it up and down the neck until you hear that it fits. It's like a piece in a puzzle. Just move it around until it drops right into place, until it sounds right. When you found the key, move the other four pentatonic patterns around the first pattern. And once again, initially pay special attention to the root note. You can begin to break this rule by identifying the chords that you're playing over. If you're playing in A minor, and the chord changes to D major, and this is important, you'll continue playing the same A minor pentatonic pattern, but it's quite safe to center the lead around D, and D is in that pattern. You're not changing the scale, still A minor, but you're hitting the D note from the A minor pentatonic scale when the chord changes to D. All of this kind of confuses people. It's not necessary to play a D at that point, but it will sound good to acknowledge the chord change. It will begin to make your lead sound as if it fits. One more piece of the puzzle falls into place. Exercise three is a tune that I call Aces High. It's a pretty cool riff. Now, you're gonna have fun with this one. It includes both hammers and pulls. 80 beats per minute isn't fast, but it will be too fast for you to execute the hammers and pulls properly. So be sure to practice each section slowly with Guitar Pro if possible. Gradually increase speed over the next week. If you can't quite get to 80 beats per minute, that's okay. Put it on your practice list and review this one until you've got it down. As you play the riffs, 
Notice that they're all notes from the G minor pentatonic. In the age of the internet guitarist, there's something musical that's been lost with all this technology. When I learned to play guitar, there wasn't guitar tab. There wasn't the internet or YouTube videos. I learned by slowing down the original recordings and playing along with my heroes. Sometimes I would spend hours trying to copy a single guitar lick. In the process, I learned how to closely mimic the feel, touch, and sound of the original artist. Today, most people take the shortcut and they learn to play by reading tab. They don't experience the sounds, nuances, and dynamics necessary to make the song sound similar to the original version. Learning from tab is a lot like learning to paint by numbers. Remember those little painting kits? You would get an outline of the painting and each bottle of paint was numbered. If there was a little shape that had a number six in the middle, you would paint the shape with the number six bottle of blue paint. Step by step, you would fill in all of the shapes with the appropriate color. When you were finished, you could hold the painting in front of you and say, by golly, that does look like a clown. And it did. It looked like a clown, but something was missing. It was a clown, but it wasn't art. And that's the problem. What is the remedy? Use Tab as a starting point. I recommend using an app like Riff Station that can slow the original composition down to half speed. It can even identify many of the chords. Put on headphones and configure them to play the original recording on one side and your guitar on the other. This may require using a small mixer or a software program like Audacity. If you need help with your setup, join our online community and just ask for help. One last word before finishing this up. Progress is not possible without the discipline of daily practice. If you're kicking yourself because you barely practiced last week, get over it. We all have weeks like that and there's nothing you can do about the past. Just get back on track this week and you'll be proud of your accomplishment. I want to see how you're doing. Send a link to a YouTube clip of your playing so I can take a look at it. Till then, see you next week.